Welcome, this is Shakti, online astrologer, and as you see, I'm living in paradise, Malawi. So I'm very far away, which means I'm doing most of my work online, my forecast readings, my astrology, counseling. So um, if you haven't done so, please sign up for your subscription. So you make sure you are kept in the loop for whatever upcoming uh, astrological uh, forecasts I'm preparing. Uh, I also love, love, love to hear back from you because it's kind of hard to keep this going if it's not some kind of a dialogue. And uh, I promise I will get back to you with whatever uh, comment you leave me. Welcome over here. So today I'm going to talk about the new moon in Libra specifically, but actually the material is very relevant if you have any planets in Libra in your birth chart. So you can uh, adapt everything I'm saying about the Libra personality and what are the, the low end possibilities to manifest them and the high end possibilities. So you can adapt all that to the planets you have in the specific uh, signs in your chart. So this is especially interesting for people who have Sun, Moon or Ascendant in Libra. If you don't know your chart and don't have your own horoscope yet, uh, I invite you to stay on till the end of the video because I will give you access to your own free birth chart and a free love stone report. So it's based on your Venus position in your chart and which gemstone will support your, your heart. So um, if you sign up at, for my newsletter at the end of the video, you will get that. The coming new moon will be 19 degrees in Libra and it's happening October 12th, 2015 at 5.05 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that means uh, wherever you're on the planet, it might be actually the next day. So we will not only be talking about the new moon and what that means for our own emo emotional development, that it's in Libra. So in order to get to the bottom of that, we need to really look into the archetype of Libra, Libra and the personality and the highs and lows of that uh, very deeply. And because my son is in Taurus and my Mercury in Taurus in the 12th house, so I, I'm somebody who always wants to get very practical with the material. So at the end, we're going to have the five tips of what to do really with that Libra energy, that frequency this month. Now you can use that for your advantage. Of course, you can ask yourself, why even bother with moon astrology? What can, can it do for me? So I believe because the moon and the sun are the two biggest lights in the sky and uh, we can follow the cycles, the waxing and waning of the moon throughout the months. Uh, we can use it for that inner attunement, this inner alignment to what's going on inside of us. And I believe our ancestors were, were having a close connection and they were planting and harvesting in connection with this moon cycle. And the, the herbal wise women, they would plant and especially cut down plants in a specific relationship to the moon cycle because then it would be more potent in the healing qualities. So I believe for our own individual purpose here, following the moon astrology throughout the month, the new moon, the full moon, can help you to develop um, emotional intelligence, we could call it. So it's just uh, in attunement to your own inner world. A little bit about me. My name is Shakti Karola Nevrin. I'm originally from Germany, have been living on Maui for 20 years now. So I'm doing most of my work online, sitting at the computer, doing my forecasts and do astrological counseling, which I am very passionate about because after 37 years, there is no doubt in my mind that it truly deeply helps us to live our highest 
best potential in this lifetime. And the deciding factor is of, is of course our state of consciousness. So astrology is a wonderful way to widen that state of consciousness into a wisdom perspective. Of course, however, the, the moon, the current moon in the sky will impact you, will have to do where the moon is in your birth chart. So the moon in your birth chart in general describes your inner mood, your needs. So you, you could say it's symbolizing your heart, your soul, your, your inner world, the emotional filter towards the world. So the moon gives us more insight about our driving need. It's an insight about what we truly need in order to feel safe. And uh, also it's really the source of joy and happiness. So if you know about the moon in your birth chart and uh, then, for example, if uh, the, the new moon or the full moon is happening in the same sign, then that's especially strongly impactful for you this month. So new moon in general means that we start into a new round of emotional self-awareness. So something new starts, a new beginning. And how that looks specifically is designed by the sign the new moon is happening in. So this month the new moon is happening in Libra. So we have to take a deeper look at what that means and with that into the Libra archetype. Libra is the second sign of the air signs. First one is Gemini. Third one is Aquarius. So the, the pictures are not quite in the right order here, but I couldn't find better ones. So anyway, the second one of the air signs in the archetypal zodiac. Libra is the sign for connection, love, beauty, harmony. Libra is a seventh sign in the development of the uh, zodiac and is ruled by Venus. And the seventh sign, it's all about the connection to the others. So we look at it as, as the archetype of the lover and the artist and the connection to, to other people in general. We've all seen similar images like this one, Venus holding the scales and they're in balance. That's the goal obviously here. So symbolizing the lover, the artist or the peacemaker. Every archetype here has that in intention to balance, to find that elusive point of centeredness. When you are Libra, your focus is to learn about life through social interactions. So other people are extremely important. And as you can see in the picture here, uh, the scales are often experienced as being out of balance. But there is this longing in the soul to meeting the other, the perfect mate, to, to learn about the dance of relationship. So if you have a strong Libra in your chart, uh, there is this eternal longing and uh, evolutionary, you could say, this is what, what it is really about for you to learn about. And of course, uh, you want to make the world a better, more loving and more beautiful place. Often we perceive Libra people as very social, very interacting, and they also have the quality to have a pacifying nature. So they often end up in positions as mediators, either in their professional life or they end up with that role in their circle of friends because they have this inert uh, longing and qualification for that balancing act of the, the scales. So usually we know them as having a big heart, being very loving people, uh, carrying that inner beauty and elegance. So, so it's nice, nice to have Libra people around you. So we can say that what Libra strives for and what matters most all has to do with love, 
that elusive state of serenity and peace and harmony and balance. So no matter if it's about the interaction with the mate, the lover, friends, it's all about those qualities and how to achieve that. And of course, such a lofty soul as the Libra is, has a shadow like all other signs as well. So the Libra shadow is that they often have a hard time to make decisions. So depending what planets are in Libra, uh, that might be really a problem. So I had a reading with a lady the other day who had five planets in Libra. And uh, she said, well, I just flip a coin. That really helps. So Libra just is so tuned to both sides of the equation. There are reasons to go that direction and there are good reasons to go the other direction. So sometimes it's just important to just decide on something. The other area is the tendency of Libran people to overcompromise. So if Libra is out of sync, then they do anything for their partner to keep the relationship going and alive. So there is a tendency to overcompromise, to become the doormat as a result of that. And that definitely doesn't make for a balanced relationship. Because uh, only if you are somebody who knows about her own needs and uh, is able to stand up and communicate them to the other, then you have a chance to find that, that balance. Same is uh, for the idea of overgiving. Huh? So you, you need to learn about healthy boundaries and standing up for yourself. So uh, Libras wanting to have everything beautiful and, and harmonious uh, can be a, a not healthy way to to be if you are not defending your own needs, if you're not standing up for your own self, your own position. And that causes an emotional imbalance. So find that way to balance the scales. As an evolutionary astrologer, I always look at the zodiac and the signs and the planets and the signs from an evolutionary perspective, from a soul perspective. So the evolutionary goal for Libra is to learn about a true, respectful eye-to-eye -eye partnership. So that's why they're so longing for having that partner, doing that dance, because this is really what it is about. To, to learn to dance, mm -hmm. then also adding love and beauty to life. So I always say there are kind of two pathways for uh, Libran people or Venusian people. One is uh, the pathway of love and connection and interaction and caring. And the other is the path of the artist where it's about adding beauty and uh, harmony in that way to life. So the goal is the same no matter which journey you take of the two. It's about finding that balance, finding that serenity and inner peace. I live on Maui and we have a lot of uh, surfing going on here and I really like that image of that metaphor of riding the wave uh, as a good metaphor of life. So life brings into our field of experience certain, uh, certain energies, certain challenges. And then it's up to us if we struggle against the wave, if we fight it, or if we are skilled and conscious enough to turn around and uh, uh, ride the wave. So, so here, the wave in general, you want to learn how to ride as a Libra and a little more with a new moon in Libra, learning that for each one of us is creativity, caring, and enjoying beauty. So it's an invitation this month to bring a little bit more of those qualities into our consciousness and therefore into our life. A good question to ask is, where do you find that quality of tranquility in your life? 
And uh, here on Maui, I have many friends who, who actually do it, surfing in the ocean or just swimming or taking walks with their dogs. So uh, usually when we're out in na nature, that's uh, an easy way to do it. But we all have different experiences and uh, different choices out of that what works for you or me. With the new moon in Libra, it's an invitation this month for all of us to kind of get more in the creative flow. So for that, it's good to become more aware. What do you consider creativity in your life? And yes, there is this what we would call artistic creativity, painting, uh, dancing, singing, these kind of art forms, but creativity actually is so much more. So it's just uh, um, how you uh, pl plant your garden or uh, how you uh, create the inside of, of your home. So there are many more aspects to what creativity for you individually means. So it's an invitation to become more aware of that and open that channel a little more. I talked about the indecisiveness as a shadow of Libra. So here I want to point your attention to making sure you find a system which helps you to make decisions. So, uh, as earlier mentioned, it could be flipping the coin, it could be making a list of pro and, and cons for something coming up. Uh, it could be uh, talking it over with somebody. So, uh, women often process that way. So, if I have a problem, I talk with my girlfriend about it. So, um, or people pull a, a tarot card and, and uh, get a symbolic uh, uh, additional hint of what it is about. So it doesn't really matter which uh, uh, way you prefer, but it would be good this, this month to become aware how you're going to do that, how you're going to make your decisions. So if I would have to chunk it down into five ways of riding the Libran wave, uh, so it's an attention to the healing and what works. So there, there are five points. Uh, the first one is the world of art. So we express ourselves, we come into the flow through dancing, singing, uh, music, painting, so whatever is your way of flowing, that is uh, the first way to do this. The second way is uh, the way of the heart, your loving, your ability to care for others, to interact. That's a beautiful way, way to, to do Libran work. Then another way to learn that uh, successful interaction with the other in your intimate relationships, in, in more distant relationships, uh, is uh, a work called compassionate com communication or nonviolent communication. So this is a set, a set of tools, of skills you're learning there, and they do workshops, and you can look it up on, on the internet. So, so you're learning how to do that, how to express yourself from the inside out. And with that, uh, to take a stand, to not get run over by the other. And uh, that's very helpful for Libra in general and for all of us this month to become more aware of how skillful we are in that area of communication. Then we have the fourth point, which is meditation. Uh, I'm a big fan of meditation as a way to calm our busy mind, our monkey mind, how we can sink inside and we can slow down the thought processes and we touch into a deeper sense of well-being, of peacefulness and creativity. So I often come out of my meditations with uh, uh, an, an idea of something and then I go out and implement. And the fifth point here I want to mention is when we use our physicality, our body, to find that balancing way. 
So Tai Chi, yoga, those uh, are actually really spiritual path. And uh, you can use that to, to balance yourself physically, emotionally, as well as mentally. So check it out, see what speaks to you the most and uh, let me know what works and what doesn't. Me personally, I'm a gemstone lover. I have been a jeweler for so many years of my life and I have learned about the metaphysical and healing qualities of gemstones. I've actually written a book about it, Jewelry and Gems for Self-Discovery. So I always want to add on at the end of my uh, teaching videos and forecast videos uh, uh, appropriate gemstone which can help you to balance out specific areas in your chart. So you might know that there's more than one true birthstone because every planet in your birth chart will have a, a perfect uh, individual birthstone relating to that point in your chart. So here one of the more general birthstones for Libra is uh, the Herkima diamond. And uh, you might not have heard about it yet. It's a very, very special stone. So the crystal community usually uh, uh, loves Herkima diamonds and knows about it. It's a natural double terminated crystal. And uh, you can see on the picture of the pendant how perfect they can come out. And uh, when I was still a jeweler, I used to make uh, pendants for, for my clients uh, because of the superior healing qualities of the, the Herkima diamond. So being worn on the heart, the Herkima diamond does this amazing job of balancing between the plus and minus point, which is so close together in the Herkima diamond. So being worn on the heart, here it was added a, a ruby, which is also a heart stone, but the Herkima diamond, even just as a single stone being worn on the heart, will balance your whole energy system. It will balance the chakras, because the heart chakra is the middle chakra between the upper ones and the three lower ones, and it kind of strengthens your energetic field, and we are all so bombarded these days. I mean, sitting in front of a computer all day, the electro smog, we are exposed to the energies of other people. Uh, I mean, did you know that uh, uh, doctors, they have the highest suicide rate uh, in the country? And it's because they're picking up stuff from their clients. So if you're dealing all day with people who are out of balance and sick, you have to find ways to balance yourself. So... Wearing Hakama Diamond is one way to do that. You can also uh, meditate with a stone or carry just a bigger chunk in your pocket. So there are many plays, ways to play around with it. And I actually have done a longer video just about the Herkima Diamond. And I'm going to put a link on for you. So if you're interested in the mysterious world of healing gemstones and how you can support different aspects in your chart, then you might want to check that out. If you have not done this yet, now is a good time to sign up for a free subscription. So you can uh, stay informed about future forecasts coming up. You could also sign up for my newsletter that will uh, keep you in the loop. And uh, if you go to my website, maoastrologyreading.com, I also give you a free report for what I call your love stone which is based on the Venus position in your birth chart and you get your birth chart. So please like the video that helps uh, with the rating and let me know if you have any comments. I'm always happy to get to hear from you and uh, we'll get back to you. If you're really interested in astrology, I like you to know that I do teach astrology classes for beginners once in a while. So uh, it could be something you're interested to learn for your own inner process or to start a new career. Uh, either way, uh, connect with me, send me an email, and I will let you know about the specifics and when the next training is going to start. Here's how you can reach me. You can either call me. Uh, remember, I'm in Hawaii because of the time zone. So my number is 808. 878-8182 or you can head over to my website, send me an email maoriastrologyreading.com 
And uh, so long I do this work, so more excited I'm about it. So with 37 years of experience, I love to do this work and love to hear from you. And uh, if you want, we can do your astrological reading through Skype, or if you can't do that, we can do it on the phone. So I'm looking forward to hear from you. Thanks for visiting. I hope to see you soon again. Aloha.